guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney and I've been a part-time reseller since 2018. And today we are going to see if Harry Tornado's Goodwill Outlet bins is worth the hype. I am at the gas station now, gassing up my car. Columbia, South Carolina is about a three and a half hour drive from where I live in Atlanta. A couple of my friends are going with me. Uh, so Shay from True Rummage that I've mentioned on here a few times, she is a full-time reseller. She's going with me and our friend Amy, who is just an avid thrifter. They're my friends from college, and they were the only people that I knew that were crazy enough to take a three and a half hour trip just to go thrifting. So we are super excited. I'm waiting on them to meet up at my apartment. We're going to hop in the car and head out. It's about 6.25 in the morning. If that doesn't show commitment, I don't know what does. I am not a morning person, so the fact that I am up before the sun to go thrifting tells you how excited I am. So we are gonna make this trip and hopefully we'll be able to get some footage while we are there. And at the end, I will recap with a haul of what I got. See you guys soon. Woo. All right guys, what are we manifesting Wait. today? Shay. Golf balls, golf clubs, look at this swing. Look at that follow through. Oh my gosh. Listen. Like a bro. Seven months. Do you have lessons? No. YouTube, y'all. Lessons. YouTube University and a couple Instagram. Those are discounted lessons. Listen. Watch it again. Watch it again. You see this extension? Uh huh. Get out of here. Seems legit, right? Legit. Amy, what are you looking for today? I'm looking for a hat, one or two. We're looking for graphic tees and plates. What kind of plates? Vintage, well, I guess it's not vintage, but 90s, early 2000s that you get at McDonald's, the Disney childhood right there. We're manifesting. Yes. Give me all the plates. Let's go find it. <laughs> Scratchy throat. Oh. Down, she's like, I don't want to get anybody sick. This is bananas. It, it is looks bananas. a lot smaller in person than in videos. It's wild. Spender. that on video.
This is way more full than I thought it would be. Yeah. Look at you. Dang, I meant to bring you. I have this like epic vintage leather jacket that has embroidery on the back and it's like USA with an eagle. And I yeah. meant to bring that to you because I'm never going to list it. But oh, we were struggling this morning. This looks awesome. Thanks. Just got everything situated. Looks really good. Have two people come up and buy gumballs. Hey, oh, I should have brought a quarter in. Do you have cash? I mean, jingle. Nope, I don't have two. Hold, please, maybe. It's but restaurant just language. Put, like, a bowl of quarters by the machine. Just some people. Hello. <laughs> right. It's not gonna be your problem. It's an easy way to uh, bring joy to you. Yeah. Oh wait, I have a quarter. Will you buy a gumball from Josh, please? Yeah. <laughs> we have gumballs, skittles, and pencil. Oh, skittles! Like, can I do the skittles? I told him that once he runs out of those uh, toy balls, he should put cheese balls in there. Cheese balls? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had a debacle yesterday with the Skittles because we put them in there and then we vended them, but it was only giving like four at uh -huh. a time. I was like, that's more than a nickel per Skittle. That's oh. Not work. So I had to take it all apart and like readjust the, the thing. Now it should give you 11 Skittles. Okay. Which I feel is a really good deal. Love that. Perfect. Let me see. Skittles. <laughs> As long as it's appropriate. <laughs> it's the appropriate. I don't trust you. I you guys this is why I don't film after work it looks like I have been through it it is a couple days after our trip to Columbia South Carolina I had every intention of filming this this morning but there's construction going on in my building and it literally sounded like I worked at a construction site so had to go to work and decided to do it this evening so if I look a little, little disheveled I apologize I had a crazy day at work so yeah let's recap our trip to Columbia South Carolina so we initially went just to go to the Goodwill outlet I will say that Josh gave me a heads up ahead of time. He said, you have to be there at open if you want a chance at the good stuff. That half off day, which was the day that we went, Wednesday, uh, would be crazy busy. Uh, in true Courtney fashion, we were late. Uh, we had to get Starbucks. That took 20 minutes. Uh, we were late leaving by 10 minutes. We hit traffic. All the things happened. So we got there. At, it opens at 10. We got there at like 10.40, 10.45. And he was not joking. It was very busy. Uh, you saw in the footage, I'm sure I could barely like weave my way in and out. I am not a small person. So getting through large crowded areas ain't easy. But we did it. Um, I learned a lot about the Columbia Benz. I learned a lot about filming with the GoPro, which I was trying, attempting slash failing to do for the first time ever. I'm going to insert a clip here so you can see what mm, I'd say like 90% of my footage looked like. So yeah, clearly crushing it there. Um, so anyways, so we got there, we ran into Josh. He had been there since open. He had two full bags when we saw him. So we ended up spending, I'd say like maybe like an hour and a half there. I went through most, when I say most of the clothing, I didn't go through like every single piece, but I, I at least sifted through every bin that had clothing in it. Same with the shoes. Um, and I honestly didn't find much. I, do I think that we would have found more if we had gotten there at open? Yeah. I was looking, I was being a little nosy Nelly and looking in everyone else's carts that I was passing and they had some great stuff. Lots of really great shoes. That's honestly what I saw the most of. Great shoes. Um, really good condition shoes. The ones that I was sorting through were not good condition and most of them I couldn't find the match for. Um, 
I couldn't really tell like what clothing items people had because they were all just piled on to their carts or in their Ikea bags, but people got a lot of stuff. So do I think we uh, failed miserably by being 45 minutes late? Sure do. Um, but I did end up coming away with, I'd say about a half of an Ikea bag full. Um, here's my receipt. I ended up paying $9.50. And how do I tell how much I got? 10 pounds? It says bin items 10. I don't know if that's the weight. Discounted price 95 cents. Okay, yeah. So it looks like I got 10 pounds. And because it was half off day, it was 95 cents per pound. If I'm reading this right, I could be reading this wrong. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. I will show you guys what I got. Um, and we will go from there. All right. So up first is just a Target collab. It's Agua Bendita for Target. This is a size medium. I did look up comps on this piece because I've told you guys before, uh, if I find a Target collab piece and comps are worth it and it's cheap enough, I'll pick it up. Um, this piece, I did feel like it was worth it. The comps weren't crazy, but when you're paying, you know, less than a dollar per piece, you don't have to have great comps for it to be a good profit. So I want to say when I was looking it up, it was like maybe like 15 to $25. I'll, have, I'll put comps on the screen. I can't really remember. It was chaos in that place. So I was honestly just uh, surviving, not thriving and was just getting by. Uh, let's see what else. So this was actually a piece for me. I picked it up for myself. It's a Pink Floyd 2X graphic tee. It's got some discoloration, but I figured I'd try to get that out. And if so, then I can wear it like in videos or whatever. And if not, then I'll just wear it as like a sleep t-shirt. Um, I'm not going to lie. I do not listen to Pink Floyd. I'm sure that I know some of their songs, but don't ask me what they are because I'm terrible with names. So I will be that person that's a fraud that is wearing a band tee for a band that I don't listen to, but it is what it is. All right, uh, I found this and for some reason it seemed familiar to me. The brand is Judy P. And so I grabbed it and I looked it up before we checked out. And I wanna say comps for just this like plain red tank top were around maybe 30, if I remember correctly. Um, again, I'll put comps on the screen, but this is, I could just tell it was higher quality. The material is really nice. It feels like a sweat wicking material almost. Um, the front is actually thicker than the back. And it feels like, um, who is it? Jay McLaughlin Catalina cloth. Feels really similar to that. So, you know, super basic. But if I'm turning less than a dollar into whatever I said, $30 or whatever, I mean, it's good for me. All right, up next is a piece that my friend Shay found for me. It is actually vintage. I'm just going to have to stop saying that I don't do vintage because almost every haul I have something vintage, but it is what it is. Uh, so this is Miss Elliot, not to be confused with Missy Elliot, the queen of the 90s and 2000s. Uh, this is Miss Elliot, made in USA. There is no size because it has been torn off. Um, also don't know what the material is. It honestly feels like polyester, but this is the cutest vintage dress. It is a, I'd say midi. It's got some beautiful beadwork. I mean, look at that. Absolutely could not say no to that. So pretty. It does have shoulder pads. The back is this like dainty button down. It's got this pleated uh, material. The bottom's pleated as well. There are a few small stains on this. I might try to stain treat myself. Um, if it feels sketchy, like I might ruin it by doing that, then I'll just sell it as is. But comps for that brand did look decent. She looked up the comps before she gave it to me and I looked them up and she was right. I want to say they're around like 35 or 40 um, on average for that brand, which is pretty good. I did find two pairs of shoes. Uh, the first I actually had in my thrift with the thrift with me portion and it is a pair of brooks glycerin um they're missing the insoles but they are in pretty good condition otherwise and i've told you guys before i sell shoes without insoles all the time that does not deter me from picking something up so um 
So yeah, this in the video, it looks like that's wear, but that's just a design. So no damage there. Um, so yeah, I'll probably just stuff these and make them look a little bit more presentable. I'd say this is probably the worst wear right here. I don't even know if you can see that. It's like fuzzy. Um, so yeah, we've got that pair. The other pair of shoes I was kind of on the fence about until I remembered that it was half off day. And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. So this is absolutely not my uh, usual aesthetic. I don't know if I have an aesthetic, but if I do, this ain't it. Uh, it is a work rain mud boot. Um, the brand is Lacrosse, Authentic Lacrosse. These are not steel toe, um, but they are really thick. Um, so anyways, I got this pair. I wanna say when I looked up comps, they were like 40-ish, give or take a few bucks. Um, so because it was half off day, I said, absolutely. If it was not half off day, I would have left them. Absolutely would have left them. Uh, these are in a size seven. I assume that's a men's, which is a small size for men's, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll get those listed, see what they bring in. Um, oh, I forgot about this. I meant to look this up. I found this bikini bottom. Um, which it's giving like 2000s. It's not super current, but the brand was Triangle. And for some reason that sounded really familiar to me. And I meant to look this up, but I guess I got lost in the bottom of the bag. I forgot I had it. So anyways, I will put comps on the screen and that will tell us whether I am listing it or not. And then probably my, not probably, definitely my best find from the bins is this, I never know if I say this right, Komarov. It's a 3X plus size, beautiful floral midi maxi dress. This was a hot mess when I found it. The It was inside out. The slip was on top of it. And it was just like crumpled up like a ball. Um, but I grabbed it. I felt it. The, the slip part felt really nice. So I dug around probably for at least 30 seconds until I found the tag. And then I realized it was Komarov, which I have never sold it, but I do have one piece that I think I hauled for you guys from my death pile that I have listed within the last couple months. And comps for this brand are really good. I have never searched plus size comps for this brand. Um, so my guess is if it is like anything else, Plus size will do a lot better than standard sizing. So I'm really excited to look that up and see what I'm going to get for that. And that's it. That's all I got from the bins. Um, so do I think the trip would have been worth it if we stopped there? Hmm, I don't know. I guess it depends on the Komarov piece and what comps are for that. Uh, it was, like I said, a three and a half hour drive. If I could do it again, if I could be on time, yes, I would go back. Uh, if not probably not i will say that in i think i said it in the video in person their goodwill outlet is a lot smaller than i expected it to be but that being said it's also a lot bigger than most of the bins i've been to so it's not like a little dinky small little thing but it just in videos looks a lot bigger even in my footage it looks a lot bigger than it actually is so i found that really interesting um i really like the way that they set everything up where they bring it out in like the speed packs, the giant cardboard boxes with the empty bins next to it and you empty it. So really you're the first person sorting through the inventory if you get there on time. Um, so that's really cool. Like I know I came across a lot of empty trash bags that people clearly pulled out of the speed packs and opened for the first time and they were obviously raw donations. So that would have been a lot of fun if we had gotten there in time to experience that because I've never been to a Benz that does that. So um, anyways, do I think it was worth it? Mm, undecided. I think I need to go back one more time on time to be able to answer that question. Um, but the good news is, is that Josh was able to recommend a lot of other thrift stores for us to go to. So we did. And we found some great stuff including a brand from my bucket list, which I will show you guys. It was our last stop, so I'll show you guys that at the end. Um, let's see. So our next stop was actually the attached retail side that's connected to the Goodwill Bins in Columbia, 
we just popped in there after the bins to see if we could find anything. And I did find a few things. Um, I just honestly could not believe how cheap their prices are compared to Atlanta. I mean, we are lucky in Atlanta. We are not like some of these other places, like I think it's Chicago and California and a few other places that I've heard of that are marking things up like $12.99, $13.99, $20.99, et cetera. Like we don't have that yet, but like jeans are $8.99 and tops are $6.49 and you know, things like that. And the bins, not the bins, the retail stores that we went to in Columbia were like one to two dollars cheaper per item, which was really nice. Um, so at this retail site, I ended up spending $42 and I got one, two, three, four, five items. So whatever that cost of goods is, I will put on the screen. No, I just lied. One, two, three, four, eight items. I was about to say that cost of goods is going to be high. Okay, so I spent $42 on eight items. So I'll put that cost of goods on the screen and I will show you guys what I got. I got quite a few pairs of shoes at this stop, surprisingly. Um, first up is a pair of Minnetonka moccasins. I sold Minnetonka a handful of times, but I've only sold their suede like fringe booty moccasins, like the ones like that they're known for. Um, I've never sold a pair of, what are these, loafers? Um, like slip-on loafers. I've never sold this. I don't think I've ever actually sold a Minnetonka regular leather piece before. So I thought it was interesting that I found these. Um, and the reason I picked them up is because the morning that we left for this trip, I sold a pair of Minnetonka booties actually to a viewer um, for somewhere in the $40 range. So shout out to you. Thank you for your purchase. Um, so because I made that purchase, I was like, you know what? The brand's doing well for me. I'm going to pick these up and try them out. So we will see. Let's see. What size are they? Oh, here we go. Um, of course, I'm not going to be able to see it. I think it's a men's eight. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'll have to look a little bit closer off camera. Um, okay, up next is a brand that I don't pick up all the time anymore, um, but if it's cheap enough, I will. These are Kate Spade, kind of like her traditional black and white stripe and their flip-flop platform sandals. They do have little bows with the spade jingles on them, and these are a size women's 10, so hopefully those will do decent. These are kind of an experiment piece. I didn't honestly didn't look up comps at the store. Um, so I got these. I've never seen anything like them. They are Crocs, but they are like a sneaker. Um, I don't know if these are technically water shoes or not, but they do have the perforation to where like if you walk in water, your shoe won't fill up with water. It'll, you know, drain out. So I thought that was interesting. The inside says light ride by Crocs. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and, you know, regular Crocs do decent for me. So I was like, you know what? Let's try this out. They're unique. I haven't ever seen them before. They're a women's size 10. Um, yeah, tread looks great. All right. This is a pair of Nikes. And these reminded me a lot of some of the pairs that I've sold for my consignment client that I recently did a haul for you guys for. Um, like I said in that video, like she, when one of her first hauls, she gave me like a million pairs of Nikes. I feel like 90% of them looked like this and they all sold great, like 40 to $60 a piece. So I didn't look these up, but I think they'll do decent. They've got this like, I don't know what I would consider that, like a purpley, pinky, mauve, kind of color same here so these are super cute they are a size also a women's 10 maybe the same lady donated her whole collection all right I think that was it for the shoes let's see what else did I get all right this I grabbed on the way out again just because their prices were so cheap the brand is mountain hardware this is new at tags. It retailed for $90. I'm not expecting that. I was thinking like maybe 60, nine, dang, $90. That's crazy. It's just a plain navy blue, like popover blouse. Um, it's got about a halfway down button down. It's got this fun split back. 
I can't get out of that $90. That's wild. I mean, that's better for me. The higher the retail, the higher the resale in some cases. So we'll see what comps say on that. That's just a, you know, I don't expect a fortune. That is just, uh, I'd say like a little bit higher than bread and butter. Um, I typically get around the $30 to $40 range for Mountain Hardware. So then the last piece from the retail side of the bin store was this All Saints dress. It's in a size medium. And it's this really cute striped, I'd say like either knee length or midi, like sweater dress. It's a really lightweight sweater material. It's got this fun button down side detail. And it looks like it's like a mixed print. So the front is the skinny stripe and the back is like a thicker stripe. So that's pretty cool. All Saints does decent for me. So yeah, that was it from the retail side of the Goodwill bins. Um, you know, lots of bread and butter, not going to make a million dollars on it, but definitely good pickups, especially for the low prices that they had. And then after that is when we went to the Overstock Marketplace where Josh and Haley have their antique booth, which was a lot of fun. It was so cool. I love antique malls. That's honestly like how I kind of got into reselling. It really is because I was watching antique antiquing YouTube videos and I was referred to an empty hanger like thrift haul or something and that's how I learned that reselling existed and that's how I got into it. So thanks to antiquing I am now a reseller but that's kind of like my like bread and butter like where I started is antique malls. So I loved going to this one. This one was really unique in the sense that like some of the booths were a lot of like artisan, like handmade crafted items. And then there's other booths like Josh and Haley's, which are more like antique style booths um, with, you know, older items, newer items, collectibles, decor, things like that. And then there were also some that were uh, clearly like wholesale purchases like they had clearly gone to the america's mart in atlanta with a resale license and purchased things with the intent to resell by marking them up um and then there were a few i don't know if it was a few there was at least one that i got excited when i saw it because it was a bunch of bins with clothing in it and i was like oh they've got like a little mini bins here at the antique mall but it was actually target liquidation so for anybody buying for personal that would be amazing i think it was like a great deal whatever it was i don't remember how much it was priced at but um you know like cat and jack a lot of kids stuff things like that um just all thrown in bins for people to sort through so that was kind of the gist of it um it was really neat. We did end up buying two Moe's plushes for our two dogs, Remy and Bentley. And I will insert the cutest video of Bentley when he uh, got his Moe's plush when I came home. He has a habit. Anytime we bring any kind of bag in the house, he immediately thinks it's like full of toys for him. So he will stick his head as deep down in the bag as he can get. And that's what he did this time. So I'll show you guys here. What is it? Dude, what you got? You love it? Yeah? Well, isn't that the cutest? He's so sweet. I love him so much. He's back here somewhere. Bentley. Bubba. Hey. What are you doing? Hi, Remy. Sweet puppies. So, they love their Moe's plush. Um, I also got a vintage, vintage? Yeah, vintage uh, Jacksonville Jaguars bumper sticker from their booth for my husband. Um, we're both Jacksonville Jaguars fans and he loved it. He thought it was the greatest thing ever. And then my friend Amy got a hat from them as well. So that was a lot of fun to check that out and like see it in person. Of course, I forgot my quarters, but Amy bought a, a quarter worth of Skittles from their machine. So that made Josh happy. Um, so after we left there, we ran and grabbed some lunch at a place called Lizard's Thicket, I think. And it was, the best southern cooked meal I have ever had in my entire life. Literally, Shay and I were laughing so hard because we were like, we don't want these. What is she doing? What are you doing? Are you getting in trouble? Oh, 
Are you getting in trouble? Hmm? What was you doing? Were you getting in trouble over there? Can y'all see your teeth? <laughs> oh, anyways, we ate the biggest Southern cooked meal ever. And I was like, there is no way that I'm driving three and a half hours after that. Like, I got to walk this off. So we texted Josh and he recommended going to this one other Goodwill. It's about nine minutes away from where we ate lunch. And he said it's the one that has the boutique store inside of the Goodwill store. Um, and I've never been to one of those. So I was like, heck yeah, let's try that out. I don't, that I know of, we don't have one in Atlanta. Um, so we drove the nine minutes and y'all, I found a brand that's been on my bucket list since I started reselling. It was the most exciting find that I've had in a long time. So I will show you guys what I got from there. Of course, I'm going to wait until the very end to show you the best brand. So stick around for that. Um, so I purchased, let's see. Oh, that was from the other store. I got that. I got something for my friend. Okay. So this is, I spent $49.96 in the boutique store in this Goodwill. And that was on four items. So clearly cost of goods was significantly higher in the boutique section than in the regular ones. I'll put my cost of goods for the boutique store here, but it was worth it in my opinion. So I got, what did I get? I did not know this was new with tags. I love when that happens. This is Ted Baker size four, new with tags. I literally did not know that, that is wild. Um, and it says a touch of cashmere. I feel like I literally just hit the lottery. You'll see that retail, 225. They were asking 9.99 for this. My biggest fear was that we were going to go in there and they were going to be priced up to like $50 a piece. And I, I think the most expensive thing that I saw in there was a vintage leather bomber jacket with like full fringe all over the front. And that was marked for $30. Honestly, in hindsight, I probably should have picked that up. It was pretty cool. But um, yeah, $30 was the most. On average, almost everything was around like $9.99 with a few exceptions. And let's see, what did I say? This is a size four, which is a US size 12 because Ted Baker uses vanity sizing. So let me show you what the actual item is. It is this wild sweater and it has these like, almost reminds me of like a lapel, but it's just like bat wing. Um, it is like a large rib. Is that what you would call that? Um, really pretty and it, I mean I guess it has to have cashmere right because it says a touch of cashmere let's see 4% cashmere which better than no percent cashmere but I don't know it's kind of pushing it to call it the cashmere collection or whatever I said yeah 4% cashmere I mean I guess they ain't lying it says a touch of cashmere and that's no more than that 4% but Anyways, yeah, paid $9.99 for this, which is totally worth it, especially new with tags. All right. Up next is Hail Bob, which is a brand I've sold a couple times before. Um, this was $12.99. If this was just like a top or something simple, I would not have picked it up, but it is a jumpsuit. And it is wild, y'all. Look at this print. This is giving like Lisa Frank. So yeah, it's just this, it's like a boot cut uh, jumpsuit. It's a size small, sleeveless. It does have pockets. That's a bonus. It's got like a pink leopard print throughout. So yeah, really abstract, really fun. I'll probably add keywords like art to wear, artsy, multicolored, things like that. So that was super cute. This one comes with a story. So this is one of my favorite brands to sell. This is Joa Brown. If you haven't heard of it, look it up. I got this. I learned about this brand from a consignment client of mine. She sent over some of these little like slinky tanks and I was like, what is this? I did look it up before I donated it, but it is a brand that does a lot of basics just like this. Really simple, doesn't have much going for it, but the comps are wild. 
I want to say like this little basic tank, especially the fact that it's new with tags, should bring over $50. I don't know. I could be wrong. It's been over a year since I've sold it for her. So I'll put comps on the screen. So follow whatever that says. But the fact that this was new with tags, I was absolutely picking it up. It's $9.99. But the story is I got into the boutique section and this was, you know, I was thumbing through the rack. I had just gotten in there and it was the rack that was right next to the checkout counter where the Goodwill employee was. And it was this like middle-aged woman. She seemed, you know, nice, normal. And I pull it out on the hanger like this and she goes, girl, that's cute, but that's small. I was like, I'm aware. I'm not shopping for myself. Thank you. The whole store heard it. I was like, cool. Love that for me so much so fortunately I'm at a point in my life where like my feelings are not hurt by things like that and I can laugh at them but like I was like thank goodness that happened to me and not some like super insecure person that you know can't handle that but I was just like honestly like I've known that at some point that was going to happen because I'm buying all sizes I buy anything from extra extra small all the way up to like 5x so you know, there are the chances of that happening are high and that's probably not the last time that's going to happen, but it's just the fact that it finally happened to me, I cannot do anything but laugh. So <laughs> I was like, at least I uh, left with a good story to tell. All right. You're all ready for it. Like who, who sings that song? Taylor Swift. Is it Taylor Swift? I think it is. Pat bow. I cannot believe I found this brand, y'all. You know, this isn't the most substantial thing that they've ever made in their lines. Um, I think they're like long gowns, um, flowy gowns with a lot of material and a lot of detailing. Those can go for three, four, five hundred dollars. Um, I don't, I didn't even look up comps on this because it was so cheap. I was like, I'm obviously gonna make a profit with it. So I picked it up. I was geeking out as I was checking out. I could not believe that I found it. I have never snatched anything off of a rack so fast as when I saw this tag. So this is like a, I don't even know. It's not velvet. It's almost like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's like the same material, hmm, like tinsel almost. I don't know if you'll even be able to tell. It's got like a sequin vibe to it, but they're not round. Anyways, um, so super pretty, black, shimmery. It's got like a cinch sleeve, a little bit of a bubble sleeve, cute little covered buttons, zip up the back. This is a US size eight, which is a fantastic size. Could not be happier about that. And I paid $16.99 for it. So yeah. Super stoked about that. Um, that's it. That's everything that I got on our trip to Columbia. Um, I absolutely, hands down, think it was worth it. No doubt about that. We found a lot of great stuff. I honestly wish I would have had more time. If we didn't have such a long drive, I would have gone to five more thrift stores. Um, but honestly, like seven hours of driving in a day, like I was ready to get home. So in summary, I am glad we went. I will probably go back. I wish that we would have been on time for the bin so that we could have really gotten like the full experience, but it is what it is. I'm happy with what we came out with and I will definitely make a profit. Um, you know, I'll, it'll pay for the gas that we spent to get there and back and then some. So um, we had an, such a fun day. You probably saw in the footage, we literally didn't stop laughing all day. These two girls that went with me are hilarious we had the best time this was one that I've wanted to do for a while um and we finally found a date that worked for everybody and decided to make the trip so you know may do this again um you know some other day in the future where we are actually on time we had to leave at 6 we were supposed to leave at 6 30 to get there by 10 but we left obviously like I said after 7 um and that's early I don't do mornings so so that's it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. My, I believe my next video is going to be part one of the best consignment haul I've ever received from another consignment client that you guys have never seen me haul before. So looking forward to that. I hope you are as well. And that's it for today. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great day. Bye.